My name is Jamin Gurker. I'm an associate real estate broker in the state of Alaska, and my mission as always is to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching in real estate. And today we're going to be talking about what's going on in the Anchorage real estate market update. If you've been watching Alaska real estate for any amount of time, you know that Anchorage is the largest market in the entire state. And so for that reason, we kind of keep a close eye on it, as you can imagine. And uh, we'll be jumping into all the, the ins and outs of what we're seeing in this market in just a minute. Before we get started, you know what I'm gonna ask you to do. Give this video a like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And let's go ahead and jump into today's market update. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at is what's going on in the residential market. And the first thing we're gonna look at what's happening in the residential market is the number of inventory we have available. So this time last year, there's about 243 properties available in the market. For the last month, we have the total available data, which in this case is December. In December of 2019, there's about 243. The past December, it was 250. So there's an ever so slightly uh, slow increase of inventory there. And uh, before we get too excited and start saying like that's a sure sign that the market is about to just flood with inventory, um, the normal days or the number of inventory that's available for this time of year is usually around 650. So there's still about half of what we normally have. We do see the past couple of years, there's been like a slow inching up compared to the previous year, but we're talking like 220 to now 250. So very, very slow gradual increase there, and it's it's going to take a lot to shake the inventory loose. We'll we'll save more commentary for the um, for the summary though. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the number of single family homes that are actually selling. So this time last year there was about 156 properties that sold. This year is about 151, 52. So not a not a whole lot of a difference there. Now the good thing about the market update when we have everything completed. Um, in the month of January for the month of December, we get the entire previous year's sold inventory reported at the same time. So this time last year, for the entire month of 2022, there's about approximately 2,850 properties that actually sold for Anchorage. Now, looking at 2023, we see that there was 2,160. So we are seeing about a 700... Um, 700 less homes selling this year than what we saw in the previous year. And I think there's some pretty good reasons for that. Again, we'll save that for the summary though. Next, we see that the average sold price went from about 457 this time last year to about 481,000 this year, which means there's about a 5.4% increase for the average sold price. Now this is an increase. There's a bit of a slowdown at the rate at which things are increasing because year to date, uh, for the same time period, last year was about 7.6, and the year before that is about 6.9, somewhere in there. So being down to about 5.4, it's still an increase, okay? So we're not going back. It's not losing value. It's just the rate at which it's increasing is, is starting to slow down a little bit. And um, I know a lot of buyers are kind of thankful for that, and, um, you know, I definitely get that. We'll, uh, we'll talk about... Uh, more about the average sold price and what we're projecting moving forward in the summary. Switching gears real quick and looking at what's going on in the condo market, we see that this time last year for the month of December, there were 59 condos available on the market. Now there's 70. So we're starting to see um, kind of an inching up of the available inventory. Before we get too excited though, again, um, remember how we said with the housing, with the single family homes, it was about half of what we would normally see. Well, it's, it's even more stark when we're looking at the, the condos because usually we'd see about 300 350 condos available on the market so that uh, that shows you just by how much we've dropped when it comes to condos in anchorage now the number of condos that have actually sold in anchorage went from about 80 the year before to about 50 for the previous uh, month where we have the most complete data which is going to be december now let's take a look and see what is going on as far as the total number of condos that have sold for the entire year. And what we're seeing is that this time last year, there was about 1,300 condos that sold for the entire year of 2022. For the year of 2023, we see that the number of condos that actually sold was just, just over 900. And so you do see that there's kind of a drop in the number of condos that are actually selling, which is not a surprise once we're down to about 20% of what we usually have for 
condos available on the market, eventually that's going to catch up with us and we'll see it in the number of um, condos that are actually selling. In previous years, uh, we're actually seeing that closer to about 1,900 or so is actually a bit normal. So even though we do have such a drastically lowered um, inventory out there, we do in fact see that we do have a drop, but not by nearly as much proportionally as what we saw for the inventory that's available, if, if that makes any sense. We might have dropped by about 10% in the number of condos that are selling or maintained about the same, but we're down by like 80% as far as the inventory that's available. So that gives you kind of an idea for how much more demand there is for condos right now, and affordable housing, even though there's not a whole lot available on the market, um, we still see quite a few of them selling. Now we see that the average sold price year to day for condos was about 244, and then it increased to about 270,000, which means that we see about a 10.72% increase for the average sold price across the board for condos in Anchorage. And this is the biggest increase we have seen in recent history. And it's not that big of a surprise that in the year where the interest rates were just going up and up and up, that we would see the value of condos go higher because as more people are looking for affordable housing options, they're going to look more to condos. And that's exactly what we're seeing here in the numbers. Whereas in previous years, the rate of increase was about 6.3, 5.6 last year. And this year, again, about 10.7. So not a big surprise there. We're going to go ahead and finish up with the uh, with multifamily, and we're going to be talking about the summer in just a little bit, though. Before we do that, though, I did want to just make sure you were aware about our monthly meetups. Uh, we are going to be getting back into the ha habit of doing that on a monthly basis. I know a lot of you might be watching this after the fact, but our upcoming meetup is going to be on uh, January 27th over at the Eagle River Town Square, where we're just going to be sledding. We'll have some hot chocolate out there and just kind of have a chance to kind of catch up with everybody. So if you're just looking for kind of a um, opportunity to kind of get to know people here in the area, do make sure you go ahead and join the Facebook group for the meetup. And that's going to be in the description section down below. It is a private group. So that link is going to be the only way for you to find it. So make sure you take advantage of that and let's go and finish up today's video. Now looking at multifamily, we see that this time last year for the month of December, there were 50 multifamily properties available. And this year it is 85. So yes, we are seeing proportionally a big increase for the number of multifamily properties. And also we are seeing that comparatively, that's still really down from what we saw pre-COVID. Because if we're looking at kind of pre-COVID, usually around like that 180, 200 range is kind of about what we would expect. So being down to about 85 a couple of years ago would have been just enormous swing towards having low inventory. I think there's a reason that we're starting to see kind of a, a big increase in the properties that are available for multifamily. I think what it is, is once interest rates drop and uh, once you get a new wave of investors coming in, a lot of them will get in, do it for a little bit and realize it's not for them. And they'll try to sell their properties as quickly as possible just because they bought problems. And um, yeah, it's it's taken way more, uh, way more headache and, uh, and heartache than they thought it was going to. And so they end up having to turn around and sell it a couple of years later. So I think that's why we're seeing kind of an increase in the number of properties that um, are suddenly available. Again, it's really low compared to what it was normally a couple of years ago, but just something to keep an eye on. Next, we see that the number of multifamily properties that are actually selling went from about 28 this time last year to 26 this year. So we do see a slight decrease just for the month, a total number of uh, multifamily properties that have actually sold. Looking at the entire year, we see that there is about 400 uh, multifamily properties that sold for the year of 2022. For the year of 2023, we see that there was about 261 properties that actually sold in multifamily. So we do see a pretty sizable drop in the number of multifamily properties that are actually selling. And you know the reason, and you see that drop while well, at the same time the available inventory is going up, which that does just tell me it probably has more to do with the um, um, kind of those first-time investors we were talking about, and also it has to do uh, with the fact that the interest rates are going up and what how much interested investors are in purchasing new properties is more directly 
correlated with uh, the interest rates going up than it is on single family. Obviously, they're they're kind of tied to each other to a certain extent, more so with multifamily though. So that's one of my theories as to why we're kind of seeing that drawing back in interest in multifamily in Anchorage, at least for the moment. Now, this is the only asset class we see this in Anchorage, but we see the multifamily uh, market actually had a bit of a, a bit of a dip in its value year to date because this time last year the average sold price at Anchorage for multifamily but was about five hundred and nine thousand. Now it's about five hundred thousand even, and this is about a one point seven percent decrease for the value for multifamily properties in Anchorage. And kind of looking in previous years, you know we seen kind of some moderate increases. You know, we see that there was um, a big increase in the year 2021, which big surprise there. Um, it was right about 15%. The next year went all the way down to about 1.8% increase. And this year it's about a negative 1.7. And just to give you a little bit idea for how drastic of an increase that is, and um, we'll just say in 2021, well, you know what? Let's do 2019. That's kind of before everything went off the rails with COVID. But in 2019, year to date, average sold price was about 417. And now we're sitting at about 500,000. So even though it's drawing back a little bit, we're still a long ways off from where we were just a couple of years ago. And that's that has a lot to do with just kind of the, the scarcity of uh, multifamily assets right now, you know, even though we do see a slight increase year over year proportionally for historically where we are, it's still really low inventory. And I'm not really seeing the multifamily market crater anytime soon. I would expect to see kind of a bit of a drawing back, like we said, just because as interest rates go up, as more closely tied with how interested investors are going to be in purchasing properties, because it makes no sense to go buy a multifamily property and deal with four, five, six, however many tenants and only break even because the interest rates are at what they're at. So kind of summarizing everything here. If I am a buyer and I'm looking at this market, I'm going to be way more likely to want to purchase something now than I'm going to be willing to wait if if I can avoid it. And I know I can already hear the common shocker real estate agent says to, to go purchase a property, but here's the reasoning. The inventory is already really low right now, like in all the asset classes. If the interest rates suddenly come down, there is an absolute avalanche of buyers who have been on the fence and just waiting for the perfect moment again where the interest rates are going to come down. And if they come down, it's going to be an absolute bloodbath out there with a lot of buyers vying for an even smaller pool of options from what they had back in the frenzy of 2020, 2021, and some of 2022. The interest rates have kind of cooled that down a little bit. If they drop in the preceding months here, then that's that's going to be really tough to, to have to deal with because you do have increased competition just because there's less inventory than there was before. And also you have a couple of years more worth of inflation that have just been increasing the, the prices as well. So I would much rather get something now and have that locked in. And then if interest rates do come down really low, you can refinance and just watch everyone else lose their mind as they're competing out in the market. Okay. That's that's what I would like to see for you. Now, if you are a seller right now, this is still pretty, pretty solidly a seller's market for most asset classes, with the exception of the, the multifamily. Uh, multifamily, the, you know, we'll watch it and see what happens here. If interest rates come down, obviously, things can kind of turn pretty quickly and make it more of a seller's market again. Um, again, just because there's so, historically speaking, few options available. If interest rates come down, then that is definitely going to make it a seller's market pretty much overnight. And so if you're a seller, you know, for the most part, it's still really a good time for you to be looking at getting your property on the market. And if that is something that you want to do, reach out to me and let's chat a little about, bit about your specific situation. So that is my market update. And I feel like we're kind of just scratching the surface here. This is um, always a, a video I like doing just because we get a chance to talk about this stuff. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any further questions and we'll see you next time.